Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to take a look at a two-player only game by, designed by Jacques Zime, who is um, a designer of a lot of light, very rules simple, but a lot of player interaction heavy games. Uh, this one is named Cockroach Duel or Cackerlackin Duel. It is a follow-up to Cackerlackin Poker by the same designer um, and the same publisher, Dry Magerspiel. This is a two-player only version that plays in about uh, 10 minutes. The box is ages 8 and up, but I think you could play with younger players even if you explain the rules to them. Um, I'll take a moment to show you how the game works. It's very simple. It's just a bluffing game and a two-player bluffing game at that. And then I'll come back and let you know what I think about the game. The rules for cockroach duel are very simple. Um, at the start of the game, uh, you're going to place these four cockroaches into these spaces, and the object is to move one all the way over to your side. You actually want the cockroach, and if you manage to do that, you're going to win. Um, so each round, and it's only a two-player game, there's going to be a bluffer and a guesser. So the bluffer is going to take these four tiles and put them here at random face... Not at random. They're going to put them face down, knowing... Um, which one of these is an X. So three of them are going to be a green, good mark, and one is going to be an X. And then it's going to be the guesser's turn, and they're going to try to guess which one of these are the green uh, marks. So let's say they pick this one. Whenever they do that, they're going to be able to move a cockroach toward them. Again, that's what they want to do. So if they moved another one here, they would get to pull this cockroach over. Um, now if they flipped over this one here, this is the X tile, they don't want to reveal that. If they ever do that, what's going to happen is every tile that hasn't either been flipped or that has the X in it, is going to move toward the opponent. So that's what they want to avoid. And then the other player will simply become the guesser, and they will sort these tiles up, and um, then, you know, in secret, determine which one of these will go where. So, for example, they might be worried about this one, eventually, you know, making it all the way to the uh, opponent. So they might, for example, choose to put the X tile there, or they might anticipate that their opponent thinks that they'll put the X tile there and put it somewhere else. So it's obviously over the course of the game, as the information uh, changes, you're going to be changing your bluffing strategies by moving these around. Um, so that is simply how the game works. So it's going to take just a few minutes until that happens and then the game ends. The game does come with this variant, which allows, which I would pretty much always recommend playing with. It's the Royal variant. So Cockroach Poker had a Royal variant also. It was sold as a separate game. Um, in this now, whenever the player who is assigning these uh, tiles here, so the bluffer, chooses these, they also get to designate one of the cockroaches as a Royal Cockroach. So let's say they pick this one. The, now what happens is, if this player picks the tile and it's green, they get to take that cockroach over twice. If they pick it up and, you know, it's an X, then it comes over once and every other one that, you know, hasn't been revealed yet also comes over, just as in normal. But, let's just say this is what happens. If this is a situation, they reveal an X somewhere else, then the queen moves over twice as well as every other cockroach that hasn't been revealed or the X cockroach. So it just makes that more valuable and it increases your range of bluffing. So um, I would always pretty much recommend playing with that. Um, and pretty much that is how you are going to play Cockroach Duel. Something that I'll note because it's a pretty big component issue is that, and I'm not sure how well this is going to come up on the camera, the game uses these nice tiles, but my version, and this is a brand new version, you could see here that they have various markings on them. So, especially if you're under light, you could see this one here has almost a, a, a white circle on it, whereas these, this one, for example, doesn't have that white circle. And in a game where you're going to be doing that sort of bluffing, um, it's really imperative that you can't see you know, that kind of marking because it just reveals immediately which one of those is the you know, potential... Um, the potential uh, X. So that is a major component issue. I don't know that every copy of that is, but this, like I said, is a brand new copy of it. And you could clearly see, again, I mix them up, you could clearly see this one here has a white circle, this one doesn't, which I think dramatically impacts the gameplay. Okay, so that is Kakker, Lack, and Duel. And I had to point out the component issue when I was uh, going over the game rules because I think that is kind of a deal breaker for me. I could just by looking at these tiles right now at the backs of them, and I haven't really memorized it, but the one that is an X 
which is you know one of the four tiles. Uh, my copy of it simply has four dots, which are pretty visible even under less than perfectly optimal light conditions um, in the corners. It has these four dots in the corners. I know every time that's the X. If I shuffle them up, I could pick the X again. Like you know, let, let's see, this one's the X. There you go. Um, so. Um, it kind of kills the game for me. I, I could come up with a fix for this, but in a game which has such simple rules and such simple components, um, the fact that you could identify one of these components while it's laying face down kind of kills the game for me. Otherwise, I think that it would be a, a decent game, not an amazing game. I think I'd rather play Cockroach Poker than this every time. Um, but it is a game that, with very slim rules, it does create some surprising... Um, changes in the valuation of those tiles and the risk that a player is willing to take as a cockroach creeps closer and closer to the other player's side. And having that royal variant, I think, really ups the interest in the game considerably. Um, and then I guess the other concern I would have with the game, since this is only a two-player game, you really have to play with somebody who would be in the spirit of it, who really wants to bluff you. Um, if a player just took these at random, component issue aside, shuffled them up and laid them down and said, oh, I'm not going to know and now you can't try to read me, there'd be literally no game there. The other player would just you know, pick three of them at random, hope they don't get the X, and that would be that. That would not be very compelling um, from a... a gameplay standpoint. So you really have to have players willing to look at it, willing to try to bluff the other player in order to be good. But ultimately, the fact that it has this major component issue, and I don't know, I haven't tried contacting the publisher yet, but I think I will, um, that you could see just, you know, not looking at that tile, that's the X. That kills the game for me, straight up. So um, until they fix that somehow, um, I cannot, you know, recommend Kakerlak and Duel. I don't know that every copy of it that is going to have that as an issue, but just based on the nature of these tiles, it seems very obvious that it could happen a lot. And I, you know, I see, it looks like a manufacturing issue, honestly, because I see like semi-circles on the ones that have the circle on. So I think whenever they were painting or whatever, it was essentially sanding down in some way, the backs of these. And then this one, which has a, you know, an X on it, has the dots on it. So I think that some sort of weight was being applied to that. So it seems like a manufacturing issue and it really is a game breaker. So. Sorry to say those are my thoughts on uh, Kakerlak and Duel, but uh, thanks for watching.